Hey, and we're back. Um, I noticed that uh, the audio on the last episode is kind of odd, so I hope I fixed it now. I'm still figuring this out. I know that I'm like two months in, but don't mind me. Why did the ski resort? You strap on your skis at Large Donkey Mountain and decide you want to ski the dreaded Triple X Double Plus on Good Slope. That's a 1994 reference. Do pretty well for the first 10 feet. After that, it's kind of a blur. A cold, painful blur. When you come to, you're bleeding profusely. You're bleeding profusely and wrapped in a barbed wire fence. Why the heck would someone put up a barbed wire fence in the middle of a ski slope? Turns out the answer to that is to keep their herd of violently territorial goats from, from wandering off. Escape is a test of your willingness, wiliness, and skiing activities. Check out the gift shop. I've got one. I wanted to get this, which is what I will do. I'm going to assume it's a... Uh, it's an offhand item. Damn. Most compasses are useless in the desert because the sun causes the ink to fade on the dial. This one is labeled in a magnetic paint that protects it from harmful, harmful ultraviolet radiation. Yeah. Ah, well. And let's just kill a Oh, Timber healed me. That was nice of him. All right. Ultra hydrated. You reach the pool of water at the center of the oasis and are oddly compelled to drink from it. I guess that's not that much of a compulsion. You're just thirsty. The moment the water touches your lips, you feel completely and utterly refreshed. This is by far the wettest water you've ever encountered. Proper hydration fills your every nook and cranny. Even some crannies you weren't even aware existed before. Let's go to the desert. Oh. The sun beats down mercilessly. The sun beats mercilessly down on you as you trudge through the desert. You can practically feel your eyeballs drawing out and your skin baking in the heat. As much as you'd like to tell that damn sun exactly what you think of it, you'd like to tell that damn sun exactly what you think of it, but you read all the moisture in your body will evaporate and pop of steam if you open your mouth. How long have you been out here? Hours? Days? The shivering desert sand stretched to infinity. What on earth made you think you'd be able to find the pyramids on foot in the hundreds of miles and a trackless wasteland? Seemed like a reasonable idea at the time. You need some kind of transportation, or at least a guide, or at least a bar, a bar would be there. Then, off in the distance, you see a small grouping of tents. What a relief, maybe one of them is a bar. You start walking with renewed determination. Estimate it'll take you an hour to cover the distance. It ends up taking 12 minutes, because the tents turn out to be much smaller than assumed. The camp seems oddly deserted. Not abandoned, the tents would be bare in the sand otherwise, but everything is eerily silent. Deserted. Huh. As you stoop to investigate one of the odd little tents, a sudden freak sandstorm gusts up out of nowhere and you stagger back. Arms raised to keep the sand out of your eyes. The whirlwind dies as quickly as it arrived, and you find yourself surrounded by a dozen gnomes dressed in sand-colored cloaks and black rubber jumpsuits. One of them, apparently the leader, steps forward. He brandishes a small glittering knife in a way that's not immediately threatening, but could become so extremely quickly. Halt, and her low free says. This is our siege, and trespassers are not welcome. Sorry, sorry, you say, hands raised. I'm not looking for trouble, looking for a pyramid. You show me your father's diary by way of exclamation. The gnome studies your father's notes intently and nods. Yes, I believe I know the place you seek. He puts his knife away and shakes your hand. I'm Nasir, knave of the Freg Fregman tribe. I will barter you knowledge in exchange for your assistance for a few minor tasks. He rummages in his packs and holds up three small pamphlets entitled Sun, Sand, and Sightseeing. Tourist brochures? Yes, I would have thought there was that much out here. That is why these are pamphlets and not hardcover tomes, this year replies. But the maps included here should help you. Sorry, I'm just looking at my audio. I think it's all right. Well, I don't know if it is, but I think it is. Um, these maps should help you in your search, and you'll give me them in exchange for running some errands, you ask? This year nods, it possibly bows. All right, what do you want me to do? Three things, he says. In an abandoned village near the oasis, you'll find a carved stone rose, a symbol of our people before the desert winds and shifting sands forced them to become nomads. We wish it returned. Find the stone rose? Check. What else? The chair boats to the door of his tent, which is bright red. The door of the shelter. I want it painted black. All right. It's another uh, another reference. That's all over the place here. All right. Seems simple enough. Finally, you need a banshee's killing jar. A what now? You've heard of a lich's phylactery? This is similar. Banshees use them to stuff up their remaining positive emotions and memories. They're also handy for repelling desert sandflies and such. So, stone rose, black paint, killing jar? Correct. For each of those items you bring me, I'll trade you one of these brochures. Okay, it's a deal. One more thing. Yeah, it's... in our last move, one of our worm writing manuals was mislaid. I fear the pages have been scattered across the desert winds by now, but if you 
Or a present name, they might appreciate their return. They're 15 of them. Worm riding manual? You ride worms? The giant desert sandworms, yes. Those death machines? You ride those? That is insane. That is insane and awesome. Can you teach me? Nasir shrugs, or at least he does a little hop, which you guess might be a shrug. Now that the manual here applies. Gotcha. Okay, I'll be back. You say, give me the three-minute wave as you leave. I'm going to double-check my recording just to make sure that my audio doesn't suck. One moment. All right. Shore Inc. Border Town. Oasis. Desert. One, two, three. Three, two, one. One, two, three. All right. Um, I think that should be all right. So I have now started a recording, and I'm recording it with this audio, with my desk recording audio, which is a little unusual, I must say. Uh, I'm hoping that it works. You're fighting a rock scorpion. It tramples you with all eight legs. Wait, six legs, I think. Well, it's an arachnid, so it actually has eight legs. Desert Exploration 2%. Well hydrated, equipped with your trusty UV resistant compass, you continue your efforts to explore the vast desert. Crest a dune and survey the nearby area. You're invited to join the Black Parade. Ha ha. Cool. Love that. Spears your solar plexus. Tober gains a pound. You see a cool rock formation you've never seen before. Black of locusts. Another swarm of fire ants. A worm riding manual page. That's great. And a cactuary. It stabs you with the quills on top of its head. You feel vaguely like a piece of parchment. See, I feel kind of... Ooh, two, two worm riding manual pages. I feel kind of um, unsafe and risky doing it like this. Just because, like, I don't know if I'm going to record what I intend to. It's a little scary for me. Um, Because it says I'm recording. And, you know, this audio is doing stuff. Let's go to Nasir. You wake your ear at Nasir's camp and find the gnome meticulously checking and adjusting the straps on his rubber jumpsuits. What's with the suits, you ask? Do Do they recycle your sweat and urine into drinkable water to prevent dehydration? Nasir looks horrified. That's the most revolting idea you've I've ever heard. We wear them because they look cool. Oh, well, anyway. I think we just pee in our suits and drink it? Good grief. Well, anyway, about those errands you had for me. Was it you wanted again? Our agreement was that I would trade you tourist pamphlets for a can of black paint, Banshee's Killing Jar, carved stone rose from the village near the oasis. Matter of our worm writing manual. It has 15 pages, all of which were lost in the desert. Have you brought me those things? Not this time. I'm working on it. Well, good luck on your travels. Hmm. Well, maybe I can go somewhere else and figure these things out. Let's go to the distant woods. I should be able to just get that from the black market, right? Black. Can of black paint. Okay. Brought some black paint for your door. You want me to do the actual painting for you? You ask a little annoyed. Oh, you hold with a bucket of black paint. And here nods and thanks. He hands you a paintbrush. You want me to do the actual painting for you, too, you ask, a little annoyed? Must I humble myself to demonstrate my physical inadequacy for the task? Nasir asks and waves a little arms at you. All right, you say, rolling your eyes. You brush a couple of coats of paint on the tent flap, screen the bright red color. What's it red to begin with? Who paints their tent flaps, anyway? You don't bother to ask Nasir these questions, since you're pretty sure you won't get answers. Satisfactory answers. Thank you. As agreed, here's a tourist brochure that should aid you in finding that which you seek. Is there anything else? No, that's all. All right. The ants go marching one by one, binding you as they go. Hurrah, I guess. <laughs> nice. All right. Bonk em. Okay. Our, oh, I forgot to drink. Already sort of thirsty, you set to explore the vast and trackless wastes. Guessing for already, you quest a dune in the desert and find a bunch of vultures feeding on the carcass of some unidentified animal. You think of several hundred lawyer jokes, and we're about to move on, you notice one of the vultures appears to be wearing a cowboy hat. It looks at you, the vulture not the hat, with its beady little eyes gleaming with predatory intelligence. Look, everybody, I'm a cowboy, it says. Howdy, howdy, howdy. 
Clearly, you're cracking up. You acquire tenuous grip on reality. Moxie minus 95%. You're giving yourself the creeps. Your mind's playing tricks on you. Keeps adding up like this. You're about to have a full bone crack up. I have five moxie. Holy shoot. All right. What do these handfuls of sand do? <laughs> I've got to check out what the hell that is. Oh, this whiskey. Bit O cactus. A small dried button shaped cactus. You've heard if you chew on these things, all sorts of mystical things will happen. You chew on the cactus and lightning bolts of multicolored mysticality shoot throughout your brain. 13 wizardliness. All right. Handful of sand. This is, well, it's a handful of sand. There's not much you can say about sand, really. It's not like dirt, only more granular. Spanish for sand is arena. If you had an hourglass to watch the sand fall through, that'd be poignant, if melodramatic metaphor. We don't have an hourglass. So yeah, sand. Go ahead and count the grains if you want. Seriously, go crazy. We won't make you count three million, though. That'd be just rude. Make stuff out of it. We can send enemies a little bit. Play with the sand, but one handful isn't enough to make anything cool. What about four? Four handfuls isn't enough. Five. You press the sand into a brick. Brick of sand. Deals 50 to 60, uh, 60 to 80 physical damage. Weakens enemies a lot. This is a brick made of lightly compressed sand. Apparently someone told you to go pound sand and took them at their word. He's hoping no one ever tells you to take a long walk off a short pier. Even though it's made of crumbly sand, it looks like it'd be strong enough to build things with if you had enough of them. Interesting. I wonder what that implies. Well, I know what it implies, and probably means that I could get a lot of them and make something out of it. All right, arid extra dry desert. More fire ants. All right, now I'm going to go heal myself. Walrus tongue. Walrus tongue. Walrus tongue. And another one. And then a honey dip locust. What could be tastier than an insect dipped in bee spit? Locusts and honey have long been the favorite food of crazy camel fur wearing prophets everywhere. Now you can too and see what all the fuss is about. Yummy. We had 37 hit points and 39 muscularity points. You crunch down on the locust, find it, trying to focus in on the honey rather than the insect bits. You feel revitalized, invigorated, and prophetic in equal proportions. And the plaque of locusts. We got another honey dip locust. And two more worm writing manuals. Oh, right. I just remembered that I'm supposed to be doing something else. You're finding a rolling stone. Oh, my fucking God. Study, scientists have studied the phenomenon of traveling stones in the extra arid, arid extra dry desert for years. Some speculate the rocks move because the wind blows them. Other scientists claim that the theory blows and the rocks become embedded in sheets of ice during the desert to where deep freezes. Others claim the rocks move by themselves, and now that you're up close, you can see that the rock's big, full lips and long, prehensile tongue probably have something to do with it. You're finding a swarm of scarab beetles. Oh my god, it's the beetles. I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> These bugs neither want to make you hold your hand, nor want to be your man. They skitter about Helder Skelter, looking for a chance to make you twist and shout. You feel like you should run for your life, or at least get some help. Fighting a cactuary. Oh dear. I didn't drink. I wasted all my adventures. This could be trouble. We're sunburned. You collapse from dehydration. Wake up a few hours later with a really bad sunburn. Glug, glug, glug. What does sunburn do? Oh, that's not so bad. Muscle minus two and moxie minus two. Oh. You trudge along the empty sands surrounding the oasis, covering your face against the stinging sand laden wind. And stop. It's almost as if you can hear something. On the next dune, you discover the sandblast remains of an old village. The hut's worn down to the foundations. The streets are cold and lonely, and when you call as anyone home, you get no response. In the center of the ruins, you find it. A rose made of stone. The bloom is about the size of your fist and cunningly carved, or possibly the result of some very surprising natural erosion. Carefully chip the, uh, chip the base of the rose away from the rocky ground and take it with you. All right, that's here. <laughs> it's good to see you again, Mwadorp. He says, and the other gnome stifles a giggle. How are things progressing with the side quit? I mean, favors they ask you. 
You give the stone rose to Nasir, who inspects it carefully in the nods. He gives it to another gnome, who wraps it reverently in a piece of cloth and carries it to the tents. Well done, he says. My people and I thank you. As agreed, here's a travel brochure, which should aid you in the trip to the desert. Look, he says, you take the pamphlet. I really appreciate this, but didn't you say you know where the pyramid is? Can't you just take me there and at least draw me an accurate map so I don't have to search the entire desert? <laughs> Nasir solemnly rotates back and forth a couple times. Did you guess his, him shaking his head no? We cannot interfere with such a journey of personal discovery, he says. But it's not... Oh, never mind. Is there anything else? No, that's all. Good luck. How do I get a Banshee's Killing Jar? Nine. Tober trips your opponent. Trippy. Oh, we got centipede eggs. Oh, it's a food. I hate that. This is a pile of tiny, wiggling centipede eggs. It looks like the baby centipedes inside aren't quite developed enough to have hard legs or mandibles. So, hey, good eating for some definitions of good. It's good food, but it gives you somewhat poisoned. Ugh. <laughs> that actually makes me want to gag. That's really gross. Oh, let's drink some whiskey. Forget about it. Ugh, gross. Oh, man. Hey, we've got so many quests we can do, though. Um, hmm. I'm going to cut the episode here, actually, because I feel a little spooked about possibly ruining my recording. So I will cut it here, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.